прямо сейчас. Круто, Юл ставит спруты, минус паучки. Но морг врезается там. 300 урона плюс, очень больно. Башня активирован глиф. Можно и без крипов заходить, потому что на миде крипы есть. В Сане еще раз заход, ничего не боится. Морг заходит вперед, Ника Бэйби Тамбилэйшн, Сайленс, очень все... Вата получается, ворвался Эрспирит, но Эрспирит здесь хотят принять, нечем контратаковать. Эндом Гад есть, но Эрспирит нажимает его бесполезно. И спасти его никак. Трансфера нет, 60 секунд. В такие ситуации, думаешь, лучше может быть бой, тогда умер и байбек нажал. Было бы сейчас хорошо, чем без, без, без трансфера и с блоких баром, но абсолютно беспомощный. Он ничего не может. Связывает в итоге бой, да что самое главное в итоге... Войд, да что самое главное, добивает Войда, он без байбека, Войд, добивает Войда, он без байбека, Войд, ну, блокинг бар был, а толку там. Ультракилл от Ксани, Ксани идет к Рэмпэйдж, Шлим. против Ксани, есть Ю, Ксани бьет дальше по Лимпу, Эзериал, Эзериал, Рэмпэйдж, первый, не, второго не будет, или будет, не дали, второй Рэмпэйдж сделать. It's a 10 pick brood, they insta picked it. So what do you do here? Huh. What can you do? Like, all three of these cores suffer against Broodmother. Nature's Prophet, Void, Limp, DP, none of these can lane against the brood. So someone's gonna have to be sacrificed. Who's the best one? Like who? I mean, they might just go with Limp. I mean, honestly, just put put Hanskin mid. Nature's That's what Prophet. I was thinking. That's what I was Nature's thinking. Nature's Prophet jungles. <laughs> I don't know, man. That is a really good brood pick, isn't it? Game one of this best of three in Alliance, getting brooded. Cheesy pick in the last spot. It's If they do that, they can shift S4 to, let's say, position four. A limp on the off lane and have hands can play mid against the broodmother he's gonna also build like an earlier spirit vessel great against morphling great against brood i don't know uh, that sounds like a very good idea dead prophet against broodmother hmm. like you, you can't use the spirit siphon and faceless void time walk is too long cooldown to jump away from brood consistently That is a really, really tough challenge for Alliance to try and work around. We'll see exactly how they clean things up and set up. Start of this game. We get underway. Hellraiser's taking on Alliance. Game one of this best of three. Funic, Pango, Roger, Shadow Demon, Miposhka on the Grimstroke with Kasani Morphling and a Nyx Brood in towards mid lane against what looks like a limp Death Prophet. I wonder if they'll keep Hanskin there just to babysit and bodyguard for a period of time. Nico Baby Void, FNG Chen, S4, Nature's Prophet. Down bottom lane it appears. B against Brood. I want to see how much Brood can get. You, you can't stop Brood from farming. It doesn't matter which hero you're playing. So she's gonna get the most out of the lane, farming both lane and the jungle. A limp, you know, manning up, taking one for the team. 30 seconds to battle. It's, it's gonna be a rough one. I'd, like the thing is you've got the Broodmother who either dominates the lane in a 1v1 and just completely runs away with things, or the Broodmother, you know, draws the attention of Alliance into mid lane. So Earth Spirit, Chen, Nature's Prophet, focus on the mid lane Broodmother, and that then gives your late game Morphling more room to farm. It's a really nice pairing of Brood Morphling where they're both able to kind of soak attention away from each other one way or the other and accelerate the quickly. Begins. Bounty runes, two up top <laughs> for Hellraisers and two down south for Alliance. Nothing <laughs> really changing here. It's just limp in that 1v1 mid. I think the, the first wave is going to be real important for limp just to try and get as many last hits as he can because once brood gets to like level three four five it is game over for the death prophet oh this aggression on the bottom lane forcing sunny to tp from tier two to tier one tower so you can actually come to a lane never waiting for him roll from earth spirit 
and Nature's Prophet with a couple of Treants and the Blightstone. Forcing him to try and see us under tower, so missing out half of his wave. Limp, 3-0. Very good start for the DP. <laughs> At least something going Alliance's way in that regard. Top lane, Roger laying it on thick. Sure that the Faceless Void doesn't have an easy time. FMG chasing Funnick back as he drags wave away from that top lane, but bottom the roll in. Hanskin catching Ksani, down to half HP with the Blightstone with the right clicks. Doing a lot of work here as Morphling about a hit away from death, but they don't get the gap closed. Hanskin unable to finish off the Morph with S4. But they've done so much damage here, Maposhka and Ksani both gonna have to salve and tango back up. Radiance Courier has been killed. Bottom lane, a lot of kill potential. Earth Spirit, Orb of Venom, Blightstone, and Nature's Prophet. Once they get level 2, you will have Boulder Smash. Like, Nature's Prophet level 2 doesn't, you know, do much more than he's doing on level 1. But Radiance if Earth Spirit hits level 2, then it's a different story. Limp is winning mid lane, by the way. 10-3 against the Brood, 3-0. Have I missed something? Is Limp the greatest player in the history of Dota? Apparently he is. He's still ranked number one, I believe. He knows exactly. I mean, I, I wonder how many times he gets cheesed by a broodmother in his pub games. He's probably got a few tricks up his sleeve, you know, just putting this pressure on, making sure Nyx is sitting around a third of his HP at any given moment. But broodmother is starting to build up the spider army now. He's building a lot of early advantage for himself. Like, you don't expect broodmother to, you know, just win the lane. Uh, once he, she hits level three, level five, then there's gonna be a lot of spiders. It's coming. Disruption up top. Roger with Funnick. Right on top of FNG with the stacks of poison. If we get three stacks here, but Roger not gonna go and commit for it, just forcing FNG back. This is where problems start on the mid lane. He has like 26 spiders. Feeding away a couple of those, but you know, if he decides to dive, Limp could be in trouble. Glyph is ready. So he can play underneath the tower, Glyph the wave attacking with the spiders. Mana sustain from Limp. He has enough to use one Crypt Swarm, just bringing a couple of mangoes to keep that. Pops both of those plus a flash. Limp knows the matchup. Oh, he absolutely does. Nyx is splitting out spiders here, making sure that the full clump doesn't get hit by the Crypt Swarms. Imagine if you had that good of micro skills to control every single spider. Like, you see him using Crypt Swarm and then you just spread them. That's not humanely possible, what am I talking about? Hey, you know, like, I can't wait for, you know, neural implants to come out into Esports. Long lane, long lane, Hanskin does catch the kill. First block spilled onto Maposhka as the ink swell. Onto Hanskin, holding the Earth Spirit in place, but he very wisely TPs back home. He knows that he has two points in attribute shift and just saw him using wave form. 35 against 17-8 on a mid lane. Limp is dominating the DP versus Brood matchup, killing all these spiderlings. What was the net worth difference? DP 1500, Broodmother 1450, so you know, Limp spending quite a lot on regen and killing off spiderlings in the meanwhile, plating that number of CS. Just brought another two mangoes. He's always putting Nyx down to like 200, 300 HP, so the dive just never comes. The top lane. Okay, he's, he's gonna walk that one off. Bottom lane, Xani very low on HP. Just action in every single one of these lanes, honestly. S4 and Hanskin doing a great job bottom. Putting that pressure on the Morphling. Top lane, Faceless Void farming decently against the Pango, the Shadow Demon. But Limp is having a free lane now. Nyx is jungling. That's just bummer. That will give Limp enough time to buy bottle for himself so there's gonna be even more health and region sustain coming up i think nyx needs to start thinking about cutting wave and farming jungle like the whole point on brood on this like radiant side is you get in behind tier one tier two and you farm a medium camp large camp off to the right hand side in that triangle it's like nyx is just gonna stick around in lane though is that power threads on brood 
I've, yeah. I don't think I've seen Broodmothers going for those items. Friends, yeah, looks like it. Like you have enough movement speed, you don't need to invest. Long dilation top from Nico, baby. Try to slow down that kill on FNG. Thought to turn it into anything of his own, though. Fanic already has Urn of Shadow Charge. You see, even core Panglers don't go for Javelin anymore. The damage got nerfed, and you want to put the pressure right away. Like, you do not want to farm for five minutes without having an item in the laning stage. And you can easily upgrade that to Spirit Vessel. Top three items in this current patch. Koshka and Hansken going head to head, but S4 still on full HP, just gonna give him the right clicks. Leaving so Bottom lane. Um, a bit of a problem here. Hellraiser's unable to get the more flame the level of farm he needs. Death Limp. profit with an arcane rune bottle. Yeah, He's holding saving the point. The right? point. I mean, he's gonna get the rune, and they uh, rune and gonna get the ulti, and then they push the tower. But there's a lot of pressure on the mid lane already. And the shadow demon is waiting in the wings. Poison stack out onto limp. Good spread of the spiders, and finally, broodmother gonna chase down the death prophet. The spirit siphon's keeping her alive. The banish will come out now, though. And Roger slows down the retreat of limp for the first kill. The death prophet will suffer. Catapult still alive at seven HP. Nyx is going to be able to tank this up for it. Is under attack. That's a dead tower. So now this... Whenever you lose a tier 1 tower against the Broodmother, this whole area becomes accessible to Broodmother. So she can farm that and farm the mid lane and she can also backstab easily. Gets the whole box there and yeah, down into the bottom lane. Looks like Nyx, Gloves of Haste, Band of Elven Skin. Now into the Fusion Blade. Okay, it is the full treads coming out. Nature's Prophet ulti. Bouncing into Mifoshka. Trap him in with the trees. And Grimstroke dead for the third time in a row. Potential here to do a bit more damage on that tier one. They won't be funny with the rolling thunder ready. Pops they see me rolling, they don't down. care. S4, but he's already bailed out. The roll on roll action as the rolling boulder betting for the rolling thunder. Hanskin is out there and funny. Nothing done with his first rotation. Hanskin kick away. Four seconds for his roll and he's just fine. Who do you rotate to kill a Broodmother? Like, you don't have a good hero unless there's Faceless Void Chronosphere. It's very hard to bring her down. The Fusal Blade is coming out quickly here for the Brood. 4,000 net worth on Nyx. Lynch did a very good job, but the net worth difference now becomes very apparent. 1.2k a... difference. He did better than I expected. I thought he was going to be pushed out of the lane way earlier, but that first couple of ways that he built the advantage gave him an extra minute to hold his ground. Now Broodmother with the poor man's shield, extra agi, damage block. Good luck killing her. Warfling's also struggling though. Funny Morbid Mask, couple of Wraith Bands. Hold his own under at tier one. Mirror items dropping, neutral ones. Trusty shovel, poor man's shield for both of the teams. All this movement into mid and bottom lane gives Nico Baby a bit of time to relax, calm down, hit some creeps. Third in net worth as they do roll onto the Morphling. Limpers here. Still no level in FNG in and trouble. Oh, he gets it before. Nice. And in comes S4. Meposhka. Gonna be dropping for the fourth time. The Chrono double bonus kill. Targeting down Funix. Saved by Roger for a second here. Maybe Swashbuckle out. He's gonna get him out. Funix survives and escapes. Rolling Thunder to dodge away from the Rolling Boulder. And also stuns the Void in the meanwhile. Nico Baby getting chain stunned. HR with perfect execution. Killing off S4, FNG, Nico Baby. Hanskin gonna drop as the Brood Mother comes swarming through with her little babies. Oh, that build on Funic, Raindrop keeping him alive from bashes of Faceless Void. And after he used Rolling Thunder, he uses Urn of Shadow on himself to be able to survive the next 
couple of hits coming out from Earth Spirit. So, so far, so good. Like, in terms of net worth, game's pretty even. But Hellraisers with this lineup, like Broodmother is about to finish her Diffusal Blade, then you need to care. That's what can blink away Earth Spirit can also try to roll away but there's a, a lot of other heroes who can just straight up die like Chen, Nature's Prophet if he does not have TP ready Nipochka's not having a good time so he's just farming some XP on the bottom lane uh, they don't have the best abilities to throw inside the soul vine so he might even skip the level 6 OP. Once they get Spirit Vessel on Phonic, then it's gonna be much, much easier. Like, oh, left shotgun on Morph at one point, mid lane. Found by the Demonic Purge. The slow, but the Brutal has being turned on. Hanskin has bodyguarded limp beautifully, and Roger's forced to disrupt up S4. Alliance have the numbers here. Four heroes all ready and waiting to jump on Mr. President. Limp is kept alive. Still Lame. does feel Alliance want to be that, you know, tidal wave of aggression. They want to be pressing forward with Chen DP, Nature's Prophet taking down towers like they're doing here. For the past 10 minutes, though, it's been Hellraisers really. Yeah. Good pressure forcing Alliance back. Oh, spirit Vessel. You don't expect it to have it this early on. It's a bootless Pangolier. He has hasted up, sprinting across the map. Four. Two very quickly towards the Orchid. Has the urn. All the pieces coming into place here for Alliance. Mech on Chen. Maelstrom about 100 gold away for the Faceless Void. Net worth pretty even as well now. As you know, Broodmother Yes is up at the top. But you've got these three core heroes looking very nice. Our alliance as well. The Broodmother I really can go out and solo kill any number of heroes on the map right now. There's Alliance. Smoke from smoking. Alliance. Looking for Nyx, they've got the Chrono, and it looks like Nico Baby a bit itchy to use it. He throws it onto the Brood, and the rest of Alliance, here they come. The Cavalry arrives, kill off the Spidling, that is a ton of gold. Every Spidling falls. Funnick's gonna get chased down by Hanskin to the north. Nico is chasing the Poshka, but I don't know if they'll be able to catch him. As they focus onto Funnick, a bit more damage from S4 will take down the Pangolier, and Nico Baby. S4 drops a hit, 150. Extra 20 from Wrath of Nature, now he gets damage talent on level 10. That's what they needed, they need to use Chronosphere to hold this Broodmother. She's building a BKB, that's gonna be an earlier one. Usually Broodmothers don't love to buy that early. Like getting Orchid maybe would have been a better choice. But then again, there's a ton of slow stuns coming up from Earth Spirit. Nature's Prophet just finished Orchid, yeah. Warfling does get that morph off though. Hanskin just a fraction of a second away from that roll hitting Zaxani. There is the showing of the Orchid though, the debut. Not getting a kill, but putting Warfling down to bottom lane at the very least. Momentum shifting though. A couple of kills that Alliance have had. And that tier one mid dropping. Nice influx of gold, and they want to keep the ball rolling, smoking up yet again behind the DP. Exorcism oh, ready with an arcane it. rune. Another. How many that, arcane runes is that? That's the third I'm one, really, if, I, if my count is correct. It feels insane, honestly. Hanskin's gonna dodge away from Miposhka, doesn't have the smoke broken, and now the roll forward. They've got the perfect vision over the Grimstroke. Jump in with the Faceless Void, Sans, the Grimstroke, and Pangolier. That Wrath of Nature takes him down to half HP. They get the Soul Bind out, Void vanished up with his partner behind him as S4 needs to deal with Nyx as Lip focused down by the Rude Mother. The Hand of God from FMG by a little bit time here for Lip, but Phonic rolling Thunder dealing with him so nicely. Hanskin's fallen, and Hellraisers hold their high ground. A double for the Morphling, and Nyx Brood. Charging through Alliance as FNG is the only man left standing. Chronosphere still on cooldown for 30 seconds. I can't believe how long of a cooldown this spell is. 
They, they needed to take a fight, otherwise they don't have enough lockdown. And Morphling is getting closer to his Vanto style, still needs like 3-4 uh, minutes to farm it up. Then he's gonna be able to get rid of time dilation, any silence. They have 1-2-3 silences on their side. And it does something. DP didn't stuff. even get the ghosts off that fight, so Arcane Rune not being used as effectively as they would have liked. I guess when there are so many Broodmother Spiderlings, the ghosts don't matter that much. I'm just being focused down by a little swarm. Big swarm now. Next, I've got tons of them. Die. Thousand gold away to brood. Roger. Closing in on Ether Lens, the Shadow Demon. Now we 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 said the Grimstroke Soulbind doesn't have many abilities to, to to go into it, but using Soulbind just to disrupt two heroes and then focus the other three. I mean, Poshka did such a good job in the previous fight. He was about to drop was waiting with the soulbind silenced the faceless void and used ink swell like Radiant half a second before he died on morphling who blinked in they have two very nice gap closing heroes like pangolier and morphling so if you use ink swell on those two like you know that they're gonna get the good jump man i, I i'm a big fan that we don't see pipe being built every single game on the offlaners like look at me you can't fight me haha <laughs> i've got fight Funic, no neutral item. A little bit upsetting. Poshka has a shovel. Oh, clumsy net. He'll take that one. It's the best one. I mean, you just have to call it, Gary. It's the best one they could get. Stops the TP so they can play more aggressive on the Nature's Prophet. Great against Faceless Void. Can't use the Time Walk. And you can just uh, perma stun people with it. Radiant's like you use net on the hero and on yourself. And then you just keep rolling for one and a half second. They've already consumed up their royal jelly, mango tree in their banks as well. Dire side, we've got ourselves the Vambrace for the Faceless Void. And claw dropping now as well. That could be good for S4. See who it heads over to as the Nether Shawl still yet to be picked up. Smash. Alliance slowing things down a little bit now. Trying to get this Faceless Void up and running with that Mjolnir very nearly complete. All space for Kasani. You have these pressure heroes in Alliance that are sitting in the bottom right corner of the map doing nothing. Here comes that big round of items. Yours for limp. Matched by the BKB of that broodmother. Radiance top tower. Hellraiser smoking towards that dire jungle. Observer Ward on the high ground just expires as well, so Nico Baby doesn't have the safety of vision anymore. Roger is having such a great game, we didn't uh, mention him at all. He he, void. What he needs to do is just stay away from the Chronosphere. Disruption. Rolling Thunder coming in from Fane. They catch the Void with a silence and down his go with Nico, baby. Fanek, man, he can uh, apply for Olympics. Did you see that jump with the shield crash? Yeah, doing like a 720 somersault over the cliff top, shield crashing in. And we're gonna, stuck have, the we're gonna have Tony Hawk remastered. How hyped are you? I know you played that game, Gary. <laughs> Coming out in 2020. I just, I, 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 I've not looked into it because I'm always scared of remake games, you know, ruining my, my nostalgia. But I, I want, you know, I want all the soundtrack there. I want. Yes, yeah, that, I want that's what I was about to say. The like, if the soundtrack is not the same, I'm not getting it. Exactly. I mean, heaven is a half fight. Funnick killing off all the Chen creeps, but Limp is here with a nice AoE silence, picking off Miboshka. Grimstroke haze. It's for Funnick's aggression. The TP up onto the high ground. S4 doesn't complete it. That's Funnick gets back to Fountain. Solo smoke from Roger. Where is he going? Awesome. I'm not gonna find anything. So if Roger just stays away outside a chronosphere and uses disruption, look at the range of it. Ether Lance already, plus a cast range on level 10. Some of the talents are like never picked up in the game. The 
right talent is even though it's a lot of int it's a lot of mana you don't have mana problems on this hero when you play him as position four yeah and especially a lot of these stats talents you know after getting hit by the 20 percent nerf and being hit by the, the the stat nerfs right not having magic amp not having spell That's resistance and stuff they just feel infinitely worse than any of the other talents that they're up against yeah the perfect one i would say is mirana level level 10 12 damage if i'm not mistaken let me just check Mirana. I believe it is. Yeah, 12 damage. Wonder when we get to the point where all of the like stat and damage and movement speed and like all like, XP and gold are all gone. So all of those talents. So are, yeah, like, let's say you have that talent. Morphling right now with all this agi, 67% physical resistance. So you deal four extra damage per hit on Morphling. Good job. <laughs> That's atrocious. Yeah. Change all talents to spell-based talents. That's that's what we're moving towards. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Four. They TP aggressively there as the rest of Alliance taking control and making a bit of a base camp around Roshan. In fact, heading into the pit. Hellraisers are, are sending a couple of little spiders wobbling their way over to the pit. Now they know Alliance are inside. Sani, Morphling, can't really get Dyer's here very quickly. The rest of Hellraisers have got to make some noise. Has fallen. Try and stop Alliance having such an easy time. And they will group up together now. Funnick moves himself into position to try and rolling thunder into the pit. The Inkswell there. BKB from S4 though keeps him up and running as the Fatal's Void needs a time wall outside. They've caught out Hanskin though. Morphling pummels him into the ground. Oh, back, First kill up and you're right. There is no buyback. It's the Broodmother into the back line. One, two, three. Down they go. S4's got the TP home but he's bashed up. The basher on Broodmother paying off beautifully. Roshan now belongs to Hellraisers. Hellraisers are just in full control of this game. Rolling Thunder from Phonic, blindly inside the pit to see what's happening. Faceless Void without a BKB needs to time walk away. Like you can't take that fight. And they were very nicely spread inside and around the pit. What did they gave it to? They gave it to Blue Mother. Okay, interesting. Usually the Morphling is the carrier. I guess they don't want this pressure to stop from the Brood Mother. Usually she's like one of the heroes that suffers a lot and loses a ton of momentum if you kill her. And it gives her a chance with the BKB, right? So like pop ages, then come back, second life with BKB, insatiable hunger. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Morphling with Manta and attribute shift feels reasonably good here up against you know, the silences of DP and nature's prophet. And the Earth Spirit as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ghost Scepter for the Morphling. Around over that secret shop. A thousand gold away from the full E Blade now. Alliance. They're still chugging away. Coming down bottom behind the faceless void. Just feels like, you know, limp, even though he had such a spectacular laning stage against the Broodmother, wasn't ever able to go and really do anything. You know, we had arcane runes galore, but exorcism was never really able to be used because the teamfight execution of Hellraisers has always been step one, focus limp, kill the death prophet. Step two, kill everybody else. Nyx always has a couple of spiderlings around him, so that means a lot of that damage coming up from that prophet ulti is not gonna be hitting the heroes. Full Radiant ethereal blade, attack. this is the combo. Like you have full E-Blade, Spirit Vessel on Grimstroke, double purge on top of that. I just love Shadow Demon and Morphling as combination of two heroes. Soul Catcher is always gonna be great. You lower the portion of HP. You can one-shot people at every stage of the game. Face disruption into Rolling Thunder. Oh, not quite time perfectly. Now the Chrono turns around from Nico, baby. Zoning the Chronos here. It's there, he's gonna jump away. So Rolling Thunder, 60 seconds cooldown. Faceless Void Chronosphere, 150. Well worth it for Hellraisers as they also try and catch out Limpy. You'll stop the Broodmother, but Xani in there with the adaptive strike to stop the TP. Bottom lane is being pushed in. That's a good thing for Alliance. But seems like Hellraisers Radiant's are not stopping. Is under attack. They want to use they this are. Aegis still. Two Dyer's and a half minutes left on it. Yeah, they are breaking high ground. Oh, man, these illusions. 
Annihilate the Buildings Alliance are trying to commit down south. Carnival TP, the Rolling Thunder, a Rolling Boulder comes in beautifully timed from Hanskin, starts him up and he popped the Greaves. That's full Greaves on your Phonic Pango. He's trying to get out of danger, but Nico maybe with the bashes until the Soul Blind. Double Sun now arrives with a disruption on top from Roger, holding the place and buying some time. But Morphling to come in, TPing slowly but surely, arriving, but S4, BKB TP home. Morphling needs to find a different target. Time walks forward. E Blade without a strike void on Death's door, but he time walks high ground. Gets himself a TP home. The stun can at the last second, Kasani, mega kill streak, finding the void, defending that tier three, and a full lane of barracks, middle lane, everything going Hellraiser's way. Alliance can't take a fight if Faceless Void does not have a Kronos here. It's that easy. Even if he does, he still doesn't have a defensive item, so he will need to wait another like two minutes to farm it up. <laughs> this gives Hellraiser's enough opportunity to just close out the second tier two tower on the bottom lane. Man, Broodmother is so farmed. 17,000 gold. Remember, that's a 10th pick Brood. Yeah, with a Morphling on the team as well. You know, Brood makes space for Morphling. Morphling makes space for Brood. Both of them incredibly farmed right now. What fast coming up the next? As top lane. Funic, yet again, in on top of S4, who didn't pop his BKB. So he's annihilated by the chain stuns. Roger and Funic pairing up wonderfully as they try and make a play bottom with Kasani ink swelling forward, but roll out from Hanskin. Get him away from the clutches of Hellraisers. Easy tier two. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Aegis only for another 10 seconds or so. Miposhka, what a boss. With the gem, he, he walks and plants a deep observer board in their base. That's gonna scout out the smokes. They see who's sitting where. You don't necessarily need to go and try out to close this game. Just wait for the next Roche, which may respawn in two and a half minutes. But if somehow you manage to grab a kill, you like might FNG. close out this game, yeah. Walking to try and ward high ground. He's still moving forward. No vision here for Hellraisers up there, but the Spidlings will move in to scout out Alliance's move. Sunny. Sunny just shows that he's faceless with go at me. Yeah, I dare you. Up. I've got waveform, time warp, time dilation, Manta, Evely. Attribute shift, what are you going to do? I'm going to time dilation you on to S4 with an E-Blade Adaptive Strike down to 500 HP. And now trying to move forward as that faceless void. I was expecting Kasani. Chrono from Xani. He was trying for it. And now the Broodmother arrives. You know you're in trouble as S4 TP home nearly gets blown up by that stroke of fate. That would be a disaster. He didn't have buyback. That's going to be something super important now as DP does. As the only hero on the dire team, they give up Chen, FNG, Mech, and Hand of God. Sunny being turned around on, but Alliance just holding their line, not getting baited into a fight here because Broodmother was ready to split that fight in two. Roger was also ready. He was holding position, like his hero doesn't move. Even bought a blink dagger, so he can just stay away from Faceless Void, blink in. If he gets a Chronosphere on one of the targets, like Pangolier or Morphling, he's just gonna disrupt them. Nico Baby, a couple of hundred away from BKB. Shows on the top lane. They know that's exactly what he's doing. Gets around for one more wave here. Look at this Roger Shadow Demon tasted with Blink Ether Lens ready to jump. Can they find him? Time warp, Nico Baby cancelled out. Does he buy the BKB? He's got enough money, but he's holding a buyback or something. But the rest of Hellraisers are here surrounding him. Void, he's E bladed, he chronos up the two of them. He's and come in to try and save the day. But they're all stuck up here. Alliance have got nowhere to run. Nico Baby has no TP. Ksani and Roger giving chase. The time warp back to the right hand side. S4 gets his escape out. Somehow, Alliance don't lose a single soul. Tie. Nico Baby's being recalled by the Chen. They only got a kill on Broodmother with that Chronosphere, and every single Chrono after that was used for just as escape mechanism. That Now all the lanes are pushed in, Roche may respawn in 20 seconds, someone should keep an eye on that, just put the career inside, or a couple of Spiderlings. Morphling plunks himself up top lane. 
gets that wave pushed in while the rest of his team still in that dire triangle playing off the ramps mid and bottom with catapults coming in. Another good opportunity here for Hellraisers. Look at that second lane of barracks or any kind of misstep. Alliance. Still looking at those buybacks. S4, Limp. Do both have them on the Dire team? Chen is about five gold away from it. But Void and Dyer's Earth Spirit, your two main teamfight heroes, are lacking. Next, Yule's up. Sprout. Gonna come out from S4 for the Trians to try and guard this tier three with a glyph now. And Hans again in that tree line, looking for an angle. But the targets aren't showing. It's only the Morphling who walks forward. The roll misses. Sunny. Got off a time dilation and Hansken, he is stuck here on the low ground and with no buyback. Now a 5v4 for Hell raises to exploit. Morphling straight up there. Roger Demonic Purge, the blow up on Limp with a soul capture. Down goes DP. They're going to force the buyback out of Limp for sure. But Nico Baby soulbound. BKBs and Time Walks back. Now trapped with FNG. This is it. Hellraisers are cruising towards victory. Nyx on this Broodmother, clearing up house. But Given it's the rampage. Kill by One kill away from the rampage. And he's looking for it. Limp is half HP. Self fuels again just to buy a bit of space. Nibosh got focused down by S4, but it's a rampage by Kasani. Now into the fountain. Get the double. No, it's Nyx. Stealing the kill away from Nyx. the ball. Well, he on, could have had a triple rampage. triple rampage being stolen. But it is good game. Alliance tap out the last pink brood mother for Hellraiser.